Welcome to the Simply Campbell Podcast with hosts Ralph and Courtney Campbell. We have this life motto, life is short, love deeply, live simply. In this podcast, we will talk about how to live that out in a beautifully chaotic world. Come join us. Welcome to the Simply Campbell podcast. Thanks for coming and listening. We are talking today about simple living. Simple is as simple does. This man is as simple as it gets. So he's actually, I'm just going to let him take the stage here. This is like all him. He didn't know that. Bye. I'm just going to sit here with my Simply Campbell mug and listen. Really? Nah, I don't think I can. I can't be that quiet. No, I didn't think so. (laughs) Simple living. What is it? Not, you tell me, how do you, how do you want to live simply, honey? Less stuff. Yeah. He hates stuff. I love throwing stuff out. Oh yes. Throwing stuff out is great. It's therapeutic for you. Mm-hmm. More therapeutic than selling it. Why are we choosing to live simply? Mm. Well, because the more you have, the more the things that you have manage you. How right? do we know that? How? Oh, well, cause we've been through it. The more you have, the more it manages you. True. And my ADD mind can't handle a lot. No, it can't. You know how we know that? You have a thought. Go. We lived in a 1600 square foot house with a basement before we moved. And our basement was a disaster because it was always easier just to stuff stuff in a tote and pile it by the wall. Mm-hmm. And occasionally go through it. Mm -hmm. So the upstairs to our house was orderly. Pristine. When it wasn't getting fixed. When we weren't remodeling it. But the downstairs or the basement was always a mess. Mm -hmm. Because we just didn't have time to manage it. Yeah. Well, we also had three boys that are home all the time and they loved to turn it into trashy town. Yes. We didn't have the time to work on it, to go through it. It was so it was trashy down. I mean, it was there were some times that I would just end up downstairs in the basement for hours. Like, I can't do this anymore. We have to go through this basement and, and it would look good. It would look good for a week. And, and then it trashy would town. Turn back into trashy town. You know town. why? Because we didn't get rid of this stuff. I'm very good at organizing. I can take things, whatever's in front of me, and I can figure out how to like store it, fit it, tuck it in. Um, yeah, all that. And so Which I have is- figured out how to make it really organized. Which are good skills yes. to have yep. to become orderly. Mm-hmm. But when you move from a 1600 square foot house to a 997 square foot house, you realize how much stuff you have. Mm-hmm. Or when you move out of state, mm-hmm. like we did, mm-hmm. and you realize that I still have to go through a barn, mm-hmm. a two car garage, mm-hmm. a 1600 square foot house with a basement. Yep. Sometimes you don't realize how much stuff you have until you have to move. And you're like, wow, what do I do with all of this? Mm -hmm. So then you end up giving stuff away, Mm -hmm. throwing stuff out, selling stuff. Yeah. And then you move out of state to a new state and realize that I, we still don't have enough room Mm -hmm. for all the stuff. So it's further condensing. And, and what did all that stuff around us do to our mental state? It creates chaos in your mind. Mm-hmm. And you can't think clearly because you've got to figure out what to do with your stuff. And that's how I operate, at least. Oh. I, I need a clear space, clean space before I can even cook. The, the sink has to be empty usually, dishes all done, counter clean before I can start preparing my next thing. I like order, but I can live in disorder. Right. Another great, another great podcast episode of comfortable and dysfunction. But yeah. And we, we know that like with the boys being home all the time and around, it's not like we don't ever have cleanliness. We have disorder. We have messes. We've got stuff, but, and we, we just have to constantly hold ourselves accountable to, well, teach your kids to clean up after themselves. 
So if you're not a parent, well, then you have that problem. Unless you're just a disorderly person. I know a few of them. I, many of us are. I would say most of us. You know why? Because we live in such a chaotic world. We're so busy, you know, that who, who wants to take time to go through their keepsake tote that they've been collecting stuff since they were a child? Who has time to do that? That just gets tucked away. Yeah, usually. it's just it's for another day. It's for a rainy day, and other or things come in, up. Or you inherit stuff. That was something I was going to talk about. When it, you have parents that in, they collect all that stuff for their kids, and mm -hmm. then you inherit all of that. Mm -hmm. When your parents either pass away, and grandparents. My grandma has so much stuff that or she move. bought. My stuff was inherited when my parents moved. Mm -hmm. So they had to get rid of their stuff because they moved out of state. Another key point I wanted to say, because I say this to people all the time, it is much easier to bring stuff in than it is to remove it. Yes. Like, oh, sure, I'll take that, blah, blah, blah. And then when you're trying to get rid of stuff, you're like, how am I going to, you just, that's why you would just pile stuff up and just end of the driveway, done, done, get it out. Let, let the people pick it up. I can't do it. I'm not selling it. I'm not dealing with it. Get it out. And to you, that was worth your mental... It was easier State to clear thing. my head mm -hmm. just to get rid of it. Have it gone out of sight, not around. I didn't care if it had value. I just wanted it gone. Well, and why else? You were working full time, right? Yeah, work full time. You're working full time. You got the kids. So when is there going to be time to go through and sell something or figure out how to get rid of it? And how many people are in that time. scene? Yeah. Oh. Probably quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. So that, like Ralph was saying that we went from the 1600 square foot house in New York and we had to have a lot of the stuff in that house in the barn and things like that because the house sat on 10 acres. So we had to have the chainsaws. We had to have the big tractor, the brush hogs, the, you know, all these things to manage and upkeep a large piece of property. So that was an uncommon, you know, we had room and, for the go-kart and things like that. So we had a lot of stuff. And but you even had the then, four seasons. I remember you saying we were there. So you had seasonal stuff. Yeah. And I remember when we were there, you were like, I'm not getting a dirt bike. I don't want to get a dirt bike right now because I don't want to have to repair the dirt bike and manage it and insure it, it and blah, 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 blah. So it, it's been a journey to figure out what you're willing to live with, what we're willing to live mm -hmm. with, what we're not willing to live with. I'm and there's others out there that I'm sure are more simple where they'd rather do something with their kids than have to know that they've got to fix five different engines. Mm -hmm. That's just more work. It's, it's, not even, it's not the work part that's a work problem. It's a time problem because mm -hmm. most people don't have the time, especially if they work full time and they don't work from home. Now, if you're remote working, I know some people that remote work, who find it easier to have more time because they can sneak away if you would, if you kind of say it that way, where they can actually like, they can still maybe have breakfast with their family mm -hmm. and then work, take lunch breaks so that they're still home. They're not commuting. They have a little bit more time to do those things. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hearing from you is, one is the main reason for why we have chosen simple living time time with family yes that is our has been our driving factor that has that has forced us into the living situation that we're in the house that we're in it's not that we didn't love where we were it causes pain sometimes to look back and see it and see videos of where we were because it was beautiful and wonderful and wonderful memories, but it robbed us of a lot of our time and it prevented us from being able to pursue where we're at now and wanting to just really have more time to invest in our boys, knowing that they have been given to us for a purpose and only for a time. And that conviction to invest in them as much as possible has driven us to find a place that is small. 
And time is the one thing that you cannot buy. Yeah. You can always make more money. You can always find another job. Mm-hmm. There's hundreds, if not thousands of ways to make money in this world. You, no matter what you do, you cannot buy time back. Mm-hmm. Once it's gone, it's gone. And that's where I've gotten to the point of, I don't want more stuff to manage. Mm-hmm. I'd rather spend time with my family than have to worry about X, Y, or Z breaking. You know, I've got to repair more things, mm-hmm. clean more things. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that I always say to people when we hear, you know, they're like, oh, we're looking into getting a bigger house or whatever. And everybody's different. I'm not, trust me, I am not judging people in bigger houses. No, there's no judgment. No. Just personal it's, preference. Yes. This is just where the Lord has directed us right now in this time. I don't know what the future is going to look like, but right now we really feel like we needed to simplify as much as possible, cut down on all of the maintenance or as much as maintenance as possible so that we could have more time to invest in our kids and invest in the direction that we believe that the Lord is moving us in and getting you home. You would not have been able to be home like we desired. Not in- just that where we were no but not just that but being in new york western new york Mm -hmm. we had the four seasons Mm -hmm. and then during the winter time it was snowy or Mm -hmm. brutally cold with high winds where no one wanted to be outside Mm -hmm. so you were just basically spending money to survive the winter or have to take spend more money which you could maybe have more extra money to spend and you don't mind, but come February, roughly, you always wanted to go south. Mm-hmm. And our boys did better outside. Mm-hmm. They'd Obvious. go play outside in the cold, but that lasted a very short period of time. Mm-hmm. We yeah. chose to downsize and home size and move to, in our move to Florida. They're, so there's less to maintain, mm-hmm. and given the seasons that are down here, you can be outside all year round. And there's so many things to do that you don't really need, we don't really need to have a lot of extra stuff to go make things enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Right now. You can go to the beach, there's trails, there's mm-hmm. playgrounds, there's all sorts of things to do. And I don't have to maintain a bunch of things. Cause I just don't want to. And our kids, they're younger. So it's not like I can ask them to go maintain a bunch of things. It's easier to, to do stuff at their level. Mm-hmm. So if they want to play with Legos, great. Let's go play with Legos. If they want to play with toy cars. Great. I don't have to upkeep all that stuff. Correct. So this has the simple living that we have chosen to do has, is, has allowed for more, Family time is yes. what I keep hearing. That's the, the whole point was family time. Mm-hmm. Whether whatever we choose to do with our family time, it's now not burdened by anything bigger, less basically just less in, less to maintain is the biggest thing because the, the more things you have to maintain, you have a big yard and you have to mow it. Uh, assuming mm-hmm. that you actually mow your yard, unless you're loaded pay, and, and you can um, pay somebody. Or if you don't, yeah, if you pay someone to look lawn service, then that's not an issue. It's the only way I'll end up in a big house again. But for us, <laughs> so it was it was everything that came with removing snow, mowing, two and a half-ish acres, dead trees that have to get cut down, and that all I could I could have paid I'm someone skipping. to do it, mm-hmm. but I had the ability to do all of it. Mm-hmm. But that cost me. A lot of time because I figured out that I had to do this stuff because we didn't have the extra money to pay services to do all that work. And were you just chipper about all of that all the time? No. No. That made me quite miserable. Yep. Cutting trees down is fun. That part. But picking up after the fact is not fun. No. It's fun to drop them. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That part was fun. But 
the rest of it's not so much fun. No. And then you got to split and cut it all for firewood. He didn't want to weed. He hated weed whack. Hated weed whacking. And we had. Track. That's no, that's the work you don't want to do. But yes, we're some tried. people enjoy all that work. Others don't. I fall in the latter category. Mm -hmm. So well, you had other things that you want to do, like spend time with the family. True. And you had to work. And then you were like, if I want to fix this and I can't afford to fix it or I can't do it myself, I have to pay somebody. I need to work to pay for it. So it was this. It's a vicious cycle. It, it was a vicious cycle for us. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on your what you make, that might not matter. Well, that's what I said. But for if, us, we've chosen to go the path of simple. For us and truthfully for the vast majority of America. Because you've got a small percentage of the rich who can afford to pay somebody else to do, you know, do lawn service. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Most people cannot afford to pay. No. The upper class can afford to pay for lawn keep, lawn care, pool care, you know, all that stuff. Even having somebody come in and clean in their house, there's a lot of people that can afford to do that. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's the rich that can afford to do it, the wealthy. Most, in a, when we're talking about America, the, the upper class, middle class, lower class, there's most people in America are, fall in the middle class. Mm -hmm. And that's where we fall. And so when we're talking here, we're really, we're speaking to the, to the middle class, the people that are in the rat race working and they want that. They, they, they think they need to be in this house, this big house. Ultimately you're fan. Yeah. So what we figured out was, I don't know if we figured it out or if it was just kind of presented to us in a way that made sense, but your kids aren't going to, Mm. speak fondly in their later years about your, and I, I'm not down, I'm not picking on people that have bigger houses. No, it's because everyone, some people have worked very hard to get to that point. Everyone so, yeah. has a preference, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, most kids I would imagine would not be like their greatest memory was that their parents had a 5,000 square foot house. It's going to be the memories that you make with them when you pass away that's what they're going to remember, not necessarily the house mm -hmm. or everything else. Mm -hmm. They're going to remember if, did you take them to their baseball game? Mm -hmm. Did you take them fishing? Mm -hmm. Did you go on a hunting trip with them? Like, did you just did, stop did, and listen to the story they wanted to read to you? Did you just spend time with them? Mm -hmm. Because that's what most kids, that's the thing that they want most. They just want, they want to be heard. Mm -hmm. They want to be known, seen and be seen. And we also, you were just reading in a book that was about how kids, the way that they feel loved the most is not even necessarily what we're doing constantly for them, but the best security that they have is in what? Do you remember? No. I'm going blank. <laughs> you said that so it- thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> you said that it was um, a marriage, a solid marriage. Mm. Yes. Is that it? That's. <laughs> you said that um, they, there's something about their love, feeling the way that they feel loved the most is not from the constant love that we're giving to them, which obviously is important, but it's actually in the love that they see in their parents. That if parents separate or divorce, there was something like they don't, like there's like no hope for the future. Like this was severed. Do you remember? It had something to do with basically it shatters their worldview. Yeah. So basically it, once parents separate, the kids are like, there's an unfixable broken mm -hmm. in that child. That's sad. A little bit. We've been there. Your, your parents together? Nope. Mine? Nope. Nope. So that's another reason is fighting for our marriage and uh, analyzing and reflecting on what things can interfere with our ability to 
stay connected? What things are causing misery in my husband that are preventing us from living like you from living to like your full potential. And I'm talking like Ninjago here, but you know, to what the way that God has called you and made you and feeling whole and complete and fulfilled. If you're constantly being just drained of work, full-time work, you working on the house, you, you can't what? You can't, how's it? You can't pour into your kids or your family your when, you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, I said family. I'm wife. your wife. Okay. From an empty cup. Mm -hmm. If you aren't filled, you have nothing to give. And if you're always giving to work or any other thing that takes you away from being with your family, that's more time. Like that's, that's a vicious cycle mm -hmm. of not having enough time, trying to make up time that you don't have. And it's just, ugh. how can you invest in your family and how can you invest in your marriage? You can't, if you don't have time. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, when we say invest, we're not saying like, take your wife out every week. Like that's encouraged in a lot of groups and marriage groups is, you know, go out on a date every week and stuff. Like we just choose actually not to do that because we're trying to, we don't want to spend the money and we don't care about a lot of restaurants and restaurant food, but we are, that's a whole nother tangent. Cause you're a food snob. I'm a food snob. Yep. I am. I'll own it. But that's why you cook. You also don't like a lot of restaurant food. It's not just me. You don't like the cost. The no. Way. Most of the time I don't like the food. Mm -hmm. I very rarely find food that I like. It's like going out to get the food. You have to drive, you have to get ready, you have to go, you have gas Chipotle money. Chipotle is pretty good though. I do love Chipotle. I do get the convenience of Chipotle. But there's, you have, something has to give. And if you're, yep. like, you either just decide to open up your fridge and just look through your fridge and say, whatever, we're just going to have whatever these need. leftovers here and finish them because we already paid for them. And I'm not going to now figure out where we want to go, spend 30 minutes driving there or whatever, waiting to get in, waiting in line to have the food made or whatever it is, and then still eat it and then drive home and blah, blah, blah. And then there's all the other costs. Because it's simple to go in your fridge mm -hmm. and figure out what you can make. It's easier and sim more simple. Yep. That's why we always end up going that direction. We always go towards simple. We're boring. That's one way to say it. Boring. Maybe. Do you know that you've been talking for 23 minutes? This is your topic. Look at you. You're not even done. Look at me go. So we just, I am done. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, we could definitely go on. We could get other things. into the weeds. We can oh, simplifying. We can get into the weeds. But so that could be for another another day. episode. Definitely. We can't give it. We can't leave. We can't. I don't. Know. But what? Huh? <laughs> Did I stutter? We have to edit that out. No. That's mean. <laughs> I was mocking myself. Did you think I was mocking you? Did you? No. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll see. I like raw. People don't need to see perfect. No, they don't. We're real people. I'm an, actually AI. Well, I actually said the same to my kids all the time. I'm not a robot. I am a human. Real feelings. Don't climb on me like a robot. Don't think Don't I can jump hear on you. Me. Yeah. You're going to break it. You're getting bigger. I am not. <laughs> another subject. Another yep. day. We have a lot that we want to share. And we do believe that the Lord has but we can, placed these things on our heart for. We have some more ideas for simplicity's things mm -hmm. that we can share. Oh, and yeah. I'm sure they'll be shared on our blog as well. Mm -hmm. Simplycampbell.com. Mm -hmm. There will be a link. Mm -hmm. You can order this fine simple is as simple does shirt can this is the this is the material the rayon -ish polyester material though because it's hot in florida so if there is really a legit interest in having this shirt not in polyester basically just let us know email us uh, there is a contact page 
if somebody really does like it, but they don't care for the material and they want to have just like a, a tri blend or a cotton, I'm open to, to changing that. Um, but we, we started but this with is this what, one. This is what I wear cause it's hot here. Yeah. And cotton is just horrible in the summer. Yeah. And they're not even just summer, like most, 75% of the year. Summer. And we're not complaining by the way, just. No, just fact of the matter. Yeah. It's hot here. Mm -hmm. I like it. My nose itches. Aww. Nobody likes nose picking. It's gross. I didn't pick my nose. I rubbed my nose. I'm just kidding. That's okay. it. That's all we got. We're going to stop there. That's what we got for now. It is. Until next Until time. Until next time. Yes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Yeah, I, truly. it's I. We just talked about time and how important our time is. May this have not been a waste of your time. May this be something that has encouraged you, inspired you, and in you know, helped in some way, maybe yeah. not yet, but I'm sure we are entertaining <laughs> to some degree. Yes. All right. Well, until next time. Peace out. Was that weird? Don't do that. Don't do that again. That's embarrassing. Fine. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already signed up to be notified of the next podcast episode, go to www.simplycampbell.com forward slash podcast. Oh my goodness. We're already like off the rails. <laughs> well, maybe that's what we wanted to have anyway.